Okay, this is example 22 in our vectors topic. We looked in example 21 at the first idea of finding the line of intersection of two planes. I did also explain the kind of overall uh, background to it. So if you haven't had a look at example 21, do so just now and then come back. So there were two ways in which we can work out the line of intersection of two planes. The first one we did in the previous example would be what we call the substitution method. The second one here, we're going to do exactly the same uh, problem. We've got the same two planes. We're going to find exactly the same solution, but we're going to use a different method. And it's just a case of saying there's two choices. Um, both of them have interesting techniques that we use, and they're useful to know. But at the end of the day, you can choose whichever one can make sense to you. So the theory behind this particular method is that we're going to find the equation of this line of intersection, which is the red line that I've got on this diagram here. Um, and so we need to, if we've got this uh, line here, then we need to, the two ingredients for a line. Uh, we need the direction vector and the point of inter and a point on the line. That's why it's called the direction and point method. So we need this direction vector, some direction vector parallel to this line. And we need a point on the line. So first of all, the idea of finding the direction vector, what we can draw from the two planes are the normal vectors to those planes. So on this horizontal plane, we'd say that's like normal one. Um, and the other plane is kind of going sloping down a bit kind of towards us here. We'll call that normal two. So the kind of thinking is that um, these are two normal vectors to the planes and we know that this line of intersection runs perpendicular to both the planes so in other words if we actually can put the the lines to get this uh, all to kind of together we're really looking at generating a perpendicular line from two known vectors in other words the direction vector of the line is simply the vector product of the two normal uh, vectors okay so we can say that um, as the uh, we can say that as d is perpendicular to n1 and n2, then we can say that d is equal to n1 cross n2, in other words, our vector product, and we can get that from the magnitude of the two vectors. Um, what have we got? We've got 4, 1, negative 2 is the normal vector of one of them, and then 1, 1, negative 1 is the direction vector of the other vector. And if we work that out, we've got something times i minus something times j plus something times k. And just going through it quickly, I've got negative 1 minus negative 2, which becomes negative 1 plus 2. We've got negative 4, subtract negative 2 again. And then we've got 4, subtract 1. And just simplifying that, that gives me 1i, and we've got negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2j, and then here I've got 3k. Hopefully that's a familiar method to you. I'm not going to go over that too much, but my normal vector, my, my direction vector for the line, therefore, is i plus 2j plus 3k, or in other words, 1, 2, 3. That's great. We've got half of the uh, equation of the line. Now we need to find a point on the line. Well, it's one of these things that if we know um, the relationship, if, if we've got a plane, then we can basically um, assign some kind of arbitrary value um, to, I suppose, both of the planes. So we're saying here that for the coordinate, We've got the equation of two planes, okay, so that's 4x plus y minus 2z equals 3, and we've got x 
plus y minus z equals 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to nominate uh, a value for one of the coordinates. For instance, uh, let's just say that we want the x coordinate to be 0. Okay, There has to be on the point of intersection of those two planes, on that on the line of intersection, there's got to be somewhere an x coordinate of zero. Great. So what does that give me? It means that the rest of it would look like this y minus two z equals three and y minus z equals one. And if I solve those equations simultaneously, then it will uh, or somewhere or another, then we can decide uh, what the other ones are. So I could use, for instance, the elimination method. I could say we've got an equal uh, amount of y here. So if I subtract the second equation from the first y, subtract y is 0. Negative 2z, subtract negative z is negative 2z plus z, which is negative 1z. And 3 subtract 1 is 2. And by multiplying through by negative 1, I get the answer that z is negative 2. And I can substitute um, to find y. What do we know about y? Well, we know that y minus z equals 1. y minus z equals 1. y subtract negative 2 is 1, which means that y plus 2 is 1, which means y is negative 1. So there's various ways to solve those equations uh, simultaneously. So we've decided nominally that our point is arbitrarily 0, and then if that's 0, we've got negative 1 and negative 2. Obviously, you could choose 0 for any of x, y, and z. You could technically choose any value, 1, 2, or 3. It doesn't matter. 0 obviously um, makes it easier to work with, um, so you, it's the most common one. So we've got a point um, on the line. We've got a direction vector which we said was 1, 2, 3, which means that our line of intersection is going to look like this. Point in line, z minus equals y minus equals z minus, and then that equals some arbitrary a parameter. So our point goes on the top. We've got zero, so there's nothing actually there. We've got negative one to put in negative two, so they become uh, positive values. We've got one, two, and three on the bottom, and I'll just tidy that up by, instead of rewriting it, just rubbing it out. And there is the equation of our line. And if you go back to uh, example 21, you'll find that we get the same answer in parametric form because it's still the same equation of the line, we've just used a different method for it. Okay? So that's the direction and point method of working out the equation of a line of intersection. Okay? You can have a, a go and decide which method works for you, and then have a practice.